What's up, folks? This is Tony Brewer and Aaron Dotson, and you're tuning in to Christianity Now. This is a podcast where we talk about contemporary issues that are facing the church, and uh, we got two videos for you today uh, that ought to spark a lot of comments and a lot of questions from the audience. So uh, I want to spend enough time on these videos and enough time about this to uh, to really give it to really give it the credence it deserves and to give it the time it deserves. So we're not going to have a stump the preacher today, and we're not going to do a third video. That being said, Aaron, what is our our verse that we always use? I'm standing by ready with First Chronicles twelve thirty two of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. That's it. We have to have understanding of the times to know what spiritual Israel ought to do. And interestingly enough, we always follow this up with 1 Corinthians seven twenty six. I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. And that's speaking of a very specific context, and we'll talk about that context this morning. Now, Aaron, how have you been this week, man? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Been a little under the weather, but I am getting better. Gotcha. Who was I talking to that we were talking about the definition of words and idioms? I can't, it might have been, I don't think, I don't know who it was, but it, whatever, whenever they were on this mission trip, they were told, you know, like, like his wife had stayed back at the hotel because she was feeling sick. And he used the term under the weather and the interpreter said, yeah. don't, don't use under the weather because that means that your wife is back home, uh, drunk and hung over or hung yeah. over. Yeah. I think that was Barry. He said that maybe Singapore or that's, somewhere. That's okay. I was scared somewhere. to say it was Barry cause I couldn't remember to save my life. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so for those of our listeners, it might be abroad under the weather. <laughs> but actually started, uh, it's a nautical phrase, whenever a crew member was sick, think about being in an enclosed vessel in a ship. If you were sick, they would make you sleep on the deck, not under the deck, but on top of the deck, and you were under the weather because they didn't want you to spread your disease germs and stuff in that enclosed environment. That's interesting. Now now yeah. you know, no one, no one's half the battle. Right, absolutely. Anyway. Yeah, I've, I've had that sign of stuff and headaches, basically. Yeah, man. Well, it well, ain't we, been no fun. We've had a certainly a, a good time up here. Um, the church here, man, is being strengthened and growing. Um, we had 28 in attendance, uh, four, four or five of those were visitors. Um, That's great. Yeah, we've got, and and we have a couple that has moved from Ontario that is trying to get everything sorted out. They're still driving back and forth from Toronto to here. Oh, and wow, that's, that's a long way, dude. It's like a twelve seven, hours or something. no, for, more, closer to closer to fifteen or sixteen. Wow, and that's just drive time, and wow. uh, so they're 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 here, but they're they're still displaced, and they have small children and stuff like that. But I think uh, yesterday morning or, or Sunday morning uh, for our children's class, we had like six little kids all in our children's class. And you listen, and so we streamed the light, we streamed the sermon and the Bible study in our private Facebook group for those to go back and listen to it or for those that are unable to be in attendance because of work or things beyond their control. And uh, somebody, a, a lady that, that wasn't able to make it Sunday morning, she said, "Oh, she said I heard all of those babies in the in the in the in the crowd. It was really wonderful. I've wondered how'd you even preach?" I'm like, "Well," and she said, "Is it is it difficult to preach with all that noise?" And my response was, "Well, it is a little difficult to preach with all that noise, but one thing that's more difficult is to preach without all that noise." <laughs> yeah. Because eventually you won't have anybody to preach to. It's discouraging without the noise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think if we uh, we counted, if if everybody who's been visiting 
and, and I'm not talking about a one and done. All of our visitors have come back several times. So if every one of our visitors show up at the same time and every member of the congregation is not working or, or sick or something like that and we show up at the same we'll have 42 in attendance. Yeah, that's good. And uh, anyway. We've had some newer members here too that – came here and they said they came here because they were looking for a sound congregation and sound preaching they wanted and uh you know online people were able to hear the yeah. preaching and teaching and you know i don't ever uh try to steal sheep but godly people want sound preaching and teaching so i mean yep. what do you do do you look them in the face and say no you need to go back where you're getting weak water or whatever you know i'm, I'm with i you. mean they want sound doctrine and so eventually they meet with the eldership here and uh, the eldership talks to them about what's going on here and how they'll be under the eldership here. And we just call it identifying with us. That's what my that's elders it. say. Well, I mean, they, that's, they, they identified with us here is what they say. That's, that's, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Um, yeah. you know, we, we, we need to teach more about that, by the way, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, we've had some. We had some folks that moved in here from Paris, actually Paris, Arkansas. <laughs> oh, Paris, well, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had Paris, you, Paris, Tennessee. I ha oh, okay, yeah. I had you for a second there, but Paris, Arkansas, and they came in not too too long ago. And younger couple, just been married about two three months. Lindsay Man, and I, awesome. yeah, Lindsay and I had them over to, over to the house the other day, and they just enjoyable to to be with them. And uh, when they first came here, I said, "Hey," they said, "We're just looking." I said, "What?" And I smiled. And I said, "What you looking for?" Uh, they, I stumped them. The preacher question. stumped them. I asked yeah. them, I said, what y'all looking for? And I smiled and I said, y'all just looking for a sound congregation? And they said, that's it. So I just, you know, well, they, they weren't expecting anybody to say that to them <laughs> like that. And if they ever hear this video, I hope they know that <laughs> well, I'm happy they're here and I wasn't trying to trick them. I just trying it, to make them think. I, I, you're coming off as affectionate. I don't <laughs> foresee anybody being offended at what you're saying now. Yeah, we've um, had good times with them. It's good. People want to identify with the congregation, with the eldership, wants yeah. the whole truth and nothing but the truth, you know? Well, that that's what we're seeing now is, uh, you know, there, there two men came back that had been estranged from the congregation for decades. Wow. For, for years. Well, when I say estranged uh, or decades, it's been a, they, they've tried in the past to be associated with it and they just couldn't for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've they've started attending and, and they're, I haven't pushed it. I haven't, you know, made an issue of it, but it's, you know, it's a really big deal that they're back. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. The, the things that are going on. Hopefully um, that means some spiritual growth going there. Sure. Well, it, it, th there are, there is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there really is. It's amazing. Anyway, let's, let's talk about this. You know, how important on a scale of one to 10, how important mm -hmm. would it be for the institution of the home to be considered, to, to, to be protected and sanctified and be considered sacrosanct? The, yeah. You might not, not you personally, but our audience members might not use that word sacrosanct all the time. Simply, it means when, you, when something is sacrosanct, that means you don't mess with it. That means it's, it's separate. It's, it's got a boundary, and you don't muck around with it. How important on a scale of 1 to 10, Aaron, would you say that considering the family and the home to be sacrosanct? Absolutely. 11 out of 10. Yeah, 10 it. out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Jo Jonathan, in fact, Jonathan, I saw your um, – Jonathan has uh, had sinus and stuff, and he tested positive for COVID a couple of weeks ago, but he's better now, so we appreciate that. And Joshua Dunley? Uh, or Donnelly, good mm -hmm. morning. Good, glad to see you with us. And incidentally, I guess I need to say this. For those of you that are here um, listening and tuning in, especially if you're on YouTube, share the video. Share it from YouTube to Facebook to local places you're a part of. Share it to groups that you're a part of. And what happens is, that's like you giving us money. You see, we can we can pay Facebook to put our content in front of people that wouldn't normally see it. But if you share our content, Facebook will say, hey, this is good content that people interact with, and they will pick it up and put it in front of people that don't normally see it. So yeah. 
we we love the support. We want you to go to Christianity or um, digitalbiblestudy.org.locals.com or digitalbiblestudy.org and support us there. We want you to do that. But if you if that's not something you are able to do or not something that you're comfortable with or want to do, share the live stream and share. In fact, share every live stream, and that will really help uh, build the build the audience. And that's that's just as good as money. It really yeah. is. Josh right. is a Josh is a friend and a member here at Washington. Oh, that's Avenue. awesome. Yep, that's awesome. Got some of the local guys I, watching. I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned I mentioned Washington Avenue in a podcast. I think the podcast I did yesterday. I, I talked about the Church of Christ being accused of being a denomination. I said I can't speak for any other congregation, but the Riverview Church of Christ is not a denomination. And I said, I know some churches of Christ that are capital. I may have, this may not be verbatim, that are capital C church of Christ that are Campbellite denominations, but Riverview isn't one of them. And then you popped in my mind and I said, you know, uh, I've talked with Aaron Dotson and I don't think Washington Avenue is one of them either. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Good morning, Connie Barden. Good to see you. All right. Th thank you, Scott Beck, for sharing it. Thank yeah, I just that just popped up on my deal. Jonathan, yeah. All right. So our two videos both have to do with the family and the the sacrosanctness. I don't know if that's even a word. The sanctity of the family. And um, Aaron has not seen any of this. I have done almost zero specific preparation. I want to have a conversation, and I want to kick these things about. I want to have to Google verses because we don't know where they are off the top of our head. And I, I want I want to have this conversation. All right? Yeah, sounds so let's, good. Let's listen to this first video. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because I remember it being the fuzz loud. All right. This is a guy. He's from TikTok, and he has put together a bunch of uh, statistics. Now, there is a joke that 79% of statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> uh, that's not the case here. I have not specifically for this video, but through other studies and research that I've done in one way or another, I've validated every one of these statistics. Like the, this guy's not a joke. He's, he's telling the truth. In fact, um, most of these statistics you can find if you believe Barack Obama to be telling the truth, you can find whenever Barack Obama gave a speech about the importance of what this man talked about. Connie, I hope I said hello to you. I can't remember if I did or not. If I didn't, good morning. And good morning. she had a birthday not too long ago. Or did she? Or is that somebody else? I don't know. I'm digging a hole. I need to stop. My birthday's, ready, my birthday's today, so happy Your birthday's birthday. today? It is. Happy birthday. Man, I am so <laughs> terrible with birthdays and stuff. In fact, so terrible I am at birthdays that I don't even wish people happy birthday on Facebook yeah. because one, I've got so many people come across my timeline. I just wouldn't be able to do it all. But two, I don't know. I just, yeah, I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad at it. Anyway. I barely uh, remembered it really. Just, I hate to. Jonathan to Exum's birthday's yesterday. Yeah. I remember seeing that on Facebook. Cool I, 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 that didn't come across on my Facebook. It's whatever Facebook wants you to see, I guess. Facebook does not play fairly. <laughs> All right, let me get this up on the screen. Ninety percent of American inmates are men. Whoops. All right, let me do this. There we go. Now, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back this up and just listen to this, and we'll stop it along the way and talk about it just a little bit. I say that. Why can't I back this up? There it is. <laughs> Connie Barton says, yes, it was, but I've started counting back. Amen. Yeah. yeah thanks to everybody that's saying happy birthday to me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank y'all very much. I mean, it's not my birthday, but thank you very much for saying, Aaron. I'm thank, thank you on Aaron's behalf. See how good a person I am. All right. You <laughs> yeah. ready, Aaron? We'll get it covered. Get this show on the road. All right. 
90% of American inmates are men, 75% of which grew up without a father. 63% of youth suicides come from fatherless homes, which means you are five times more likely to kill yourself if you are growing up without a dad. 90% of all homeless runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of children who grow up with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. We are 20 times more likely to have a behavioral disorder if we grew up without a father figure. 80% of all rapists come from fatherless homes. We are 14 times more likely to rape somebody if we grew up without a dad. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. We are nine times more likely to drop out of school if we don't have a father figure at home. Malachi chapter 4 verse 6, his preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. It will not go well with us if we do not have good male role models and healthy father figures. So I hope we don't get um, I don't, I hope I don't get a, a, a copyright strike because I just let that play through. Um, that's, that, that hurts me, man. That's the world we're living in for sure. Yeah. Um, that yes. Malachi, that, that the preaching is going to turn the heart of the fathers to the sons and the sons of the fathers. I've, I've never thought about the practical i've studied that from a theological angle okay i've never thought about what that means in a practical way and incidentally do you know uh when it comes to uh sexual molestation do you know what the uh what is one of the earmarks of sexual molestation like if, if you look at all children who were sexually molested in their in their home you know what the you know what the earmark is for the common denominator? The common denominator. That's what I was looking for. Fatherless homes, probably. Well, having a step parent step in the parent. home. Yeah. And and your your rate your your chances of being sexually molested go up exponentially mm. when a step parent is in the home. Hmm. That's right. Jonathan said uh, uh, that I've said in my preaching, if we want to fix the nation, we must fix the home. Same is true for the church. Jonathan, you've touched on something very interesting there, and this is why I don't shy away from political discussions in the pulpit and in the church. There are three institutions ordained by God, government, home, church. You cannot separate the three. There is a um, there is a social contract that goes all the way back to Genesis chapter four, and this is just me riffing. If you do well, it will be accepted of you, but if you do not well, sin lieth at the door, and you will enter into a copulative relationship, the progeny of which is death. Just like, just like the Malachi verse, God is not setting up in heaven actively cursing the nation of the United States, but built into the system of the earth, of the cosmos, the, the right. Trinity system. Go ahead. My car's went out there. My neighbor dropped me off. Went to Walmart. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You'll be fine. Sorry, brother. No, it's all good. But built into the system of this cosmos is a trinity of sorts, the government, the church, and the home. Mm -hmm. And if you don't protect those, if you don't do well in all three of them, that's why I don't buy this hogwash of, well, Christians just need to stay out of politics. Hogwash. You are to be a city set on a hill. That's, that, that's politics, folks. Polis, do a word study of politics. It goes back to the Greek word polis. It's the public. It's the public sphere. Christianity is to, 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 to infiltrate and to influence the public sphere. Christianity infiltrates and, uh, and um, influences the private sphere, the individual life, and the family sphere. And, of course, Christianity, our religion, our commandments, precepts, and divine examples from God, permeates and, and infiltrates and and influences the church. There's three institutions. 
and the Bible is over all of them, and we cannot afford to step back. I truly believe our our country is as bad as it is because the church is as bad as it is because the church is not being the light of the world and the city set on the hill that it's supposed to be, that it needs to be. That includes the public, private, and family sectors. That's it. Well, you know, I I said I was using the editorial we. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, you know, we have allowed no-fault divorce. We've allowed a redefinition of marriage. We have allowed murdering babies in the womb, and we've allowed pedophiles to groom our children to to join in this LGBTQ uh, uh, propaganda. And somebody put in the comments and blessed their hearts, and I don't know who it was. I can't remember, and I purposefully didn't think about it. I purposefully didn't remember because I, I, I understand her sentiment. But the person said, well, don't say we, they did it. And I didn't say a word about that because it wasn't the time. But I will say now, that's hogwash. We did it. Go read Daniel chapter 9 whenever he's praying to God. In fact, let's just do that. Yeah, and I was going to mention that verse you said a minute ago with Genesis 4. Genesis 4, 7, if you do well, will will you not be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. That's the problem. Sin is even ruling over the church in many many places, in many regards. And and, and that that same language is used of, of Adam and Eve whenever God talks about Eve Unto unto Adam shall your desire be, unto, yeah, unto the man shall your desire be, mm-hmm. and he shall rule over you. That is a sexual, copulative relationship. Mm-hmm. What is the progeny of that copulative relationship with sin? The only thing that comes from sin is death. Yeah. In fact, this is reiterated and specified more in James chapter 1. Uh, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, because God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Lust, when it conceives, brings forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Yep. Our action and our desires copulate and brings forth sin. Yep. And the sin, the, the that progeny of sin, is death. The picture there, the word picture there, is like of a lifeless, stillborn baby. Mm. That's a sad and scary picture. Of course it is. And and of course that, that goes right along with, with God's social contract there in Genesis four. Sin lies at the door. And and its desire to be to you and you'll and, uh, strike that and reverse it. And um you will uh you will produce death that's all you'll produce we got a lot if, of comments tony i don't know yes, if you want to touch them or not but. i do i do um let i tell you what let me do this though let me finish that let's let's read yeah, this daniel chapter nine you said yeah i so, can't wait to hear I, this i love daniel l- listen nine. listen to what he says verse three of daniel nine and i set my face until the lord god to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made my confession and said, so Daniel's making his confession. And he said to God, um, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Did Daniel do that? Daniel Not wasn't part of that. Personally, no. No. But I guess, did he take responsibility, though? He because did. of his. Yeah. He said, We have yes. done this. Yeah. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings and our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion and of faces and at the day to uh to the men of judah and at this day to the men of judah and to the inhabitants of jerusalem and to all of israel that are near and that are far off through thy countries whither thou hast driven them 
Hey, just as a fun fact, verse 7, the New King James says, but to us, shame of face. That's it. Confusion like of face, shame of faith. That's it. Yeah. Shame of face. I, I love he, that. So shame keeps, of face. He keeps saying us, though. I think he's saying part us. of your point. Us. That's my point. If if you look if you're in if you're in the United States of America if you're in Canada, and you you have noticed the decline, you need to take culpability for that, because there are times in your life where you decided to keep your mouth shut because it was easier. Yeah. The reason we know that is because Christians stood firmer back in the day. We've had this movement to say, well, we just really need to get out of politics. The reason they are transing the children, the reason they are doing double mastectomies on, ch- on girls as young as 13 and 14 years old, the reason they're giving hormone blockers to children as early as three and five years old is it's because true. Christians said we need to keep politics out of the pulpit. Because we're staying, stepping back. That's it. We don't need to step back anymore. We need to step forward, get hands on. That's it. And Could look, it be though that we don't do that because we don't want to get persecuted though? What well, that and then I, the preacher don't want to do it because he don't want to get fired. Yeah. Here's the thing: Th- this is a true statement. If you vote for a Democrat, if you vote for a Democrat in the upcoming election in the United States of America, you're voting to kill babies in the womb. You're voting to trans the children. You're voting to oppress the those that are helpless, and you're voting to uh, uh, sexually mutilate. And destroy children. That's what you're you, casting your vote for. I don't know how you can get around that. Well, how could you argue your way around that? I mean, if that's just the a wrong fact. people, if the wrong people hear this, they're going to go to Jonathan and Eric, and they're going to say, "Hey, man, those people in Christianity now they're talking politics, and they're, uh, you know, that the church doesn't need to talk politics." I'm, I'm fine with getting canceled. Uh, we'll, we'll go to another platform. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because that you cannot argue with what I just said. And, and and it's not that I'm it's not that I'm judging them, I'm just listening to what they say. Yeah. And you're also voting to get the father out of the home. You're voting to keep keep women single, and to keep women raising children by themselves, which they're not able to do. Mm-hmm. And I know some of you folks might have been raised by a single mother. If if you turned out well, you you turned out well in spite of the fact you didn't have your father in the home. Not because it was God's plan for that That's to happen. That's it. That's or it. His, or his desire for that to happen. That's it. All right, let's look at some of these comments. Oh, before we get into the comments, another thing about these statistics, this is anecdotal. But you can talk to men who are what we call tomcats who who run around and sleep with women. If you, if you ask these men, and I've asked several of them, if you go up to a woman at a bar and you could only ask her one question and get a true answer, and that would, and that would dictate whether or not you pursued her for the evening, and if you wanted to take her home or go back to her place and have sex with her, what would you ask her? And, and he said, and many of them, 15 or 20, they've all said, I would ask her, how her relationship with her dad is. And if she has, if she has no relationship with her dad or she has a bad relationship with her dad, that's the girl I'm going to focus on. Yep. That's just straightforward. That's just the way it is. One, two, three. I mean, that's, that's, that's that's where we are. Just going back to that video you first showed, look at all those statistics. It, you know, it's like God set it up with the husband and the wife. You know, <laughs> funny how that <laughs> you, you, works. You'd think God was knowing he he was no he knew exactly what he was doing. Yes, so and much so our, that he like he like he like built it into our psyche. You yes, know? and in our society, we have gone from God's plan to a purely gynocentric society where there's no reason for a young man to be married today. None. It is an inequitable. Uh, uh, contract. A woman can end the marriage. She can take up to half and, and three quarters of his stuff. She will take the kids. He, she controls everything. And if if that does happen, he is stigmatized and ostracized by the community saying, well, you didn't fight hard enough. The question is, why, why would, 
ask the mother why she made him fight at all. Mm-hmm. You know, women, the, the divorce problem in the United States is not a man problem. It's a woman problem. Look at the statistics. 80% of divorces are filed by women, and they're filed over irreconcilable differences due to sickness or loss of income. Mm. Sickness, loss of income. Wow. Anyway, I, I get a little uptight yeah. about that. Anyway, Paige Perry, 867, says, This falls to women, too. They choose the man who will father their children. That's it. Uh, women, and th- this is the thing. Th- this is something that's going to be hard to hear. There are two gatekeepers when it comes to the family. The, gate, the, the gatekeeper of sex and the gatekeeper of marriage. Women gatekeep sex. They have the power to dictate who has sex. Men have the power to dictate who gets married. And women have been taught that in order to be a viable spouse for a, for a man, in order to attract, to attract a high-quality man, you need to be successful, you need to be driven, you need to be independent, you need to have your own money. All of those are masculine qualities. These women have fell into the idea that you need to be more like a man mm-hmm. instead of being taught how to be a woman. Yep. Do you understand how beautiful a sweet woman is <laughs> yep. and how ugly a bitter woman is? Mm-hmm. Do you yep. know that a man does not care how much money a woman makes? Yeah. He is not intimidated by her. He just don't care. Anyway. Yep. All right. Daniel did not stay out of politics, Jonathan Exum says. Um, Paige Perry again says, I once heard a stat citing that the probability of a child becoming a Christian increases exponentially exponentially when the father in the home becomes a faithful Christian. That is absolutely true. There's not but like a, a one point something percent chance that a child becomes a faithful Christian if the mother only is. All right. The rate of the rest of the family becoming Christian is much higher when a faithful mother, father as compared to a faithful mother or faithful siblings. That's it. All right. What are your thoughts about how to overcome the cycle of dysfunction? Example, a woman with low self-esteem from a poor father figure chooses the first guy that gives her any attention. That's where the church has to come in. What did Paul what did, what did Paul write to to the, to the to, to Titus and Timothy to Titus expressly let the older women teach the younger women yeah yep teach them how to love their husbands and love their homes and their children and how to behave correctly that's it that's it teach them how to be shamefaced and modest I'm I was Labeth and I were uh were getting into the truck after uh after we went in somewhere to get groceries or something up here. And I just told her, I said, I cannot imagine being 18 or 19 years old and trying to find a woman that's worthy to marry. I know. Folks, now you listen to this. I'm pointing fingers, and I do not have three of them pointing back at me. This is like Peter pointing fingers on the day of, on the, on the day of Pentecost. And I'm talking about in the church. I see these girls taking pictures of themselves on Facebook and they're, they're, they're pictures that are shared by parents. And from a very early age, you're teaching these women how to look like whores. Mm -hmm. You're teaching these little girls how to look like whores, how to look in the camera. It's sultry. It's sensuous. Mm -hmm. Girls that are 12 and 13 years old today look like they're sexually mature. It is not hormones in the water or the chicken. It's the way they dress and it's the way they're taught to act. It's the environment they're taught. Yes. Behavior. And it's in the church. And that Titus passage you mentioned, verse uh, chapter 2, verse 4, the older yes. women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste homemakers. That's like a bad word in the mind of some people, even in the church. That if it you is. you say that women, young women, are to be taught to be homemakers, I immediately hear, well, it's not a sin if you work outside the home. 
Nobody that's, said it was. That's not what I said. I said the command is to teach them to be homemakers. Yeah. And, and I think you, instead of learning to be homemakers, yeah. we're just walking around going, well, it's not a sin to walk outside the home. It's like, we're not, and okay, if, but if, still, you got to teach them how to be a keeper at home. Yes. And <laughs> if you think a woman, um, a, a woman working outside the home and a man staying at home and being a homemaker are equal, Think about your 17-year-old daughter, and she brings home a boy from school, and you say, hey, so you're interested in my daughter. What are your plans and aspirations for your life? I'm going to stay home. On, and, I, yeah. I plan on marrying a woman that has a good job, and I'm going to be a stay-at-home father. That is not the Just way God set it up. Think about how that – would you want your daughter dating that boy? Yep. No. I would not. Because I don't, not. I don't want my daughter dating a girl. I <laughs> know exactly. So that's what that is. That's girly behavior. Exactly. And that's not cultural. That's ingrained in us, as you said, Aaron, since since the dawn of time. Yep. In fact, you go back to the garden after the fall. Women, their desire is unto a man, and a man will rule over them. This is going to be hard to hear, but a marriage is a transactional contract where men get sex and women get security yeah that's why are we is. well why are we hiding that why are we afraid to say that like that's bad it's not bad god made it that way that's exactly why that are god we scared to way. say that we're not talking about abuse and carelessness no we're, we're talking about the way god set it up from the beginning and we also have the explanation of ephesians 5 oh that's Husbands it. loving their wives and the wives yeah. respecting their husbands and that Titus mm -hmm. 2 passage, again, he says, teach them to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands. Oh, that's my. It. That's like a curse word in the mind of a lot of people. That's obedient it. to my husband? But that the word of God may not be blasphemed. If, if you want to beat the curve and start putting fathers back in homes, teach young people the value of the home and the value of their roles in their gender. Yep. Period. Yep. Teach those boys to know what a woman is and to yes. love, to desire, want, and love a woman. And teach yes. those women to know what a man is and how a man's supposed to act and how a man is supposed to protect and provide and take care of his wife and family. That's it. He's the savior of the body, Ephesians 5. That's, That's preserver. It. That idea is preserver. He preserves them. He protects them in every way. That's it. So it's a contract. Yeah. What? What? Uh, uh. So what? Your thoughts about how to overcome the cycle? That That's how to overcome the cycle. You've got to you got to inject the word of God into the cycle, and it's got to break at some point. It's got to break at some point. Mm -hmm. All right. Page Perry 867 also said, child out of wedlock, another low-quality yeah. spiritual leader in another yeah. generation of the home. And that's difficult. And, and I, I know that there may be children, there may be adults here who were children born out of wedlock. This is not a moral judgment. It's just we're, we're telling facts. And if yeah. you turned out well, if you are that good leader, e even, if you're, even if you're a child that was born in a, uh, um, um, raised rather, reared, in a single parent home because of a tragic death or something like that. It doesn't matter the reason why you were re reared in a single parent home. Being reared in a single parent home is suboptimal. Yep. You're still functioning through all of that stuff. Yes. And I think a person that recognizes God's word as what it is, the word of God and truth they will realize that's not a moral judgment on that person's character because there that's are it. godly people who grew up in single homes. There are hardworking people who grew up in single homes, but that's not God's plan. And a person that that's knows it. God's word is going to say that. They're going to say, I don't want my child or my neighbors or my cousins to have to grow up in a single home. Don't mean you're, you'll are you be an abject failure and there's no hope for you through the word of God. Well, of course there is. That's it. There's hope for every person through the word of God. If you make you it. make application, obey it and live by well, it. But it's still, we don't set the family up on the wrong standard. We set it up on the right standard. We, we don't we don't rule from the fringes. Right. We rule from the 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 standard. 
Oh, but um, I think we're ruling from the fringes in many cases in our society. That we are. Um, also, right. also, you know, you know what beats the statistics. You know what the exception to the rule is every time. It's the individual. Yep. Like you have Absolutely. the you have the statistics. Yep. But well, I was raised in a single parent home, and look at me. Okay, you you you're right. You're you're an individual. We're mm -hmm. talking about statistics, and and mm -hmm. and generally. You know, for for every person who was reared in a single parent home, where the father was absent, that rose above and beat the curve, you can find countless more that didn't, and that's that's what we need to focus on. I knew a very sweet lady. Um, she's I don't know how old she is now in her nineties. When I knew her, she was in her eighties, and uh, her husband was not a member of the church. She was. She was one of those faithful, godly ladies I've ever known. And um, when he died, I conducted his funeral. She and I were talking one time, and you know, I just couldn't believe she had married him. Not because he was just super duper evil, but he was not a godly yeah. man. He was not in Christ. And you know, basically, the short of what I got from her was, well, I just wasn't thinking the way I do now then. Yeah. But obviously, she never divorced him. She loved him. She performed the godly functions and role like God would have her to. God didn't tell uh, godly people just to just to divorce their uh, non Christian spouse. He said, as long as they'll stay with you, stay with them. You I was know? gonna say, and it, it's quite the opposite. Yeah, and oftentimes they can win them over. And I, I hate that she did not win him over because she had a really good attitude all the years that I knew her and was yeah. around her. But but be that as it may, she just she wasn't thinking about it that way at that time. She was an right. exception to the rule. She had they had four children, and of those four children, Tony, three of them are faithful members of the church. So you ra you rarely see that. That is yes. definitely an exception to the rule. Oh yeah. But you can't you can't use her, and I, I know you're not doing this, right? But you can't use her and say, "Well, everything you just said it's hogwash." Because here, right? Exactly. No, that, that's that's like a liberal using an abortion. Well, well, what about rape and incest? You're telling me that the 12 year old victim of incestual rape, who right. has stage four breast cancer, is denied her radiation treatment because you can't kill the baby? Yeah. I'm like, no. I'm saying we don't kill babies. Now, from that truth, let's talk about this fringe case over here. Yep, absolutely. All right. Incidentally, we I feel like we beat up the women pretty good. Men <laughs> need to be taught how to be men. Absolutely. But I think the the function the, the 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 thrust of the show is that this society has become so gynocentric that women are being taught how to be men, and men are actually being taught how to be women. And we've got to we've got to bring that back into alignment with God. You can see, generally speaking, a lot of what are supposed to be men, they're like they're like pistol whipped. The, yes. the, the one I mean, and that doesn't mean that a man doesn't take advice from his wife. Don't even go there. Right. You know, we're talking right. about just men that are behaving and acting effeminate. Yes. They're behaving and acting like a woman. That's and it. they just expect a ride off through society. You see this a lot in, in our culture where the men Women are driving the car because the man's lazy. It's not a sin if the woman drives the car, but a lot of men are riding in the passenger seat because they're lazy. That's they it. don't want to do any work, and they want their their whatever they whatever they call them in society. What's the street talk word for it? Their mama, their baby mama, yeah. whatever. They want their mama to to ride them around and do this and do that. And now it's like that's this whole you know manipulating. Well, and, and th think of, think about the system that 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 in the in the the multi generational. We we know. I mean, this is from back in the forties and fifties. We want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. So I, 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 a man, a boy, is going to grow up into a man that looks for a woman like his mother. Ladies, if you wanna if you wanna really be introspective and you want to know a lot about you. Look at your daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look at your daughter-in-law. Yep. Most of the time, that boy married her. Your son married that woman because the attributes that you showed him of femininity and womanhood, he saw in her. Yep. And sometimes these marriages fail. Because the attributes of femininity and womanhood that you showed him, 
he found in another person just as toxic to her husband as you were. Okay, I just had a flashback to an old Charlie Daniels song. What is it, Low Rider 88 or something like that? At the very end, he says, I'm going to go back where the women are women and the men are men. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the where the women are women and the men are men. That's it. And it's just a life principle song about he's riding down the road and he walks into a gay bar and all this. To the this. Drop in. Yeah, he doesn't realize what it is. And... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that used was, to that be was... that's that used to be the fringe. That has yes. definitely become much more the norm. Yes. Man, we got so many comments. I know um, it. I know. All right. When Christians get to the point that they no longer will stand for the truth, I don't mm. know what that comment was for, mm. but we have, that in certain situations, we've gotten to the point where we're no longer stand for the truth, where something just so easily true is denied, and, and well, you just can't really say stuff like that. No, if it's true, by God, I can say it. Yeah, and then the com- yeah, the next one he followed it up was saying, you know, when Christians in the church no longer stand for the truth, then they're telling everyone they're ashamed of the gospel. Oh, he must have hit enter too soon. Hey, maybe he I've did. I've done that before. Follow up. I, I shared a meme uh, on my timeline from a comedian. The more that you tell me I cannot say it, the greater my need to say it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. My brother would have paid child support to a child that wasn't his if the woman hadn't slipped up and said it wasn't his child in front of the judge. Let me tell you something. If I was a young man today and my wife divorced me and we had young children, it would just be a foregone conclusion. I'd get a paternity test on them. Mm -hmm. I've never understood that idea. Uh, I'm I'm not going to go down that road. Um, The the abortion thing, if... um, you know, a woman, if 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 if, two, if, a, if a couple comes together, when I say a couple, not married, they fornicate and she gets pregnant, she can decide to give that baby up for adoption and relinquish any financial obligation to it whatsoever. A man cannot. Mm-hmm. If it were the case that a man had the same rights when it come to childbearing, as a woman, there would be less illegitimate children. You see, a lot of my brethren think that the worst blow to marriage was whenever marriage was redefined to include homosexual marriage. That is not so. The most devastating blow to marriage was back, I can't remember when, whenever the Democrats instituted the welfare state and uh, subsidized the father out of homes. And then that was like the jab, and then the right hook that knocked it out was the no-fault divorce. Mm -hmm. Once that happened, once you subsidized fathers out of the home, you made it. You made it where where a a home a person could get more money if they weren't married. Yep. And then you allow for no-fault divorce. You destroyed the family. That was the worst thing for marriage. Yeah, more, I agree. more so, more so than <laughs> redefining marriage. Yeah, because that whole redefining marriage with the homosexuality, though that is very immoral and everything, that's that was then much more on the fringe, and probably still is compared to the millions that fall into the trap of the first two that you mentioned. Yes, in fact, uh, Todd Clipper did a study on this. Um, you know, they say the divorce rate is like fifty percent now. Is that when all? You were, <laughs> Well, it may be higher than that, but <laughs> yeah. when you account, though, that once you get a divorce, more than likely you get multiple divorces. Yeah. So it's not the divorce rate is 50%. Whenever you take the true divorce rate, which is a person gets married and they only divorce one time, the divorce rate is much lower. So yeah. there's still hope. I mean, there's still a sanctity of marriage. But the people that divorce all the time, they're going, they don't feel like marriage is sanctified anyway. All right, let's keep going. Uh, cause we, we're, we're out of time. I don't think we're going to be able to get to the second video. Uh, uh, Connie Barden says we need to know politics and vote accordingly. A Christian friend said she, she's against abortion, but for a woman's, but she is for a woman's right to choose. 
if that is the attitude, will they vote for the person who will stop abortion? I doubt it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you read that one by Mitch. Uh, my brother would have paid child. Okay, we got that one. Some mm-hmm. brethren vote for a certain party because that's who my parents voted for and their parents voted for. Um, yeah. Which sounds a lot like denominational excuses. My parents were Baptist, et cetera. That's it. I Jimmy remember Blackwell, one of my. Well, good morning. Oh, go I ahead, remember one sorry. of my. I was just gonna say. I remember one of my high school teachers. He would always say, "My dad was a yellow dog Democrat, and I'll always be a yellow dog Democrat." I'm <laughs> that's like, it. Like, okay. Well, that's you know? that comment by Scott made me think that. Yeah. Uh, Connie Barnes says that may be the case for women today, but not in my generation. A woman wanted to be a good wife and mother. I hate that things have gotten so far off the mark. They have Connie. Amen. Oh, it's bad. And, uh, we have too many girly men and too many manly girls. If you get what I'm saying, I do. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. Beauty pageants are a prime example of toddlers and very young girls looking grown. That's it. You're teaching yep. them how to be sexual, younger. Sexualize them. And, but let me tell you, let me tell you the f- height of foolishness here. You're teaching them, you're sexualizing them at a very early age. And then when, then you're telling them, do not have sex and wait to get married until you're 30. And you are robbing your young women of 10 years where they are the most attractive to men. Women women are hypergamous. They date across or up. They will never date a man or marry a man of lower status than they, generally speaking. They always marry up. So we have told women, you need to be a a man. But So your value is in your job and this, that, and the other. Whenever a high-value man doesn't, care and he wants you to be young he wants you to be fertile and he wants you to be sweet he wants you to think he's awesome now the man needs to be of a caliber where he is awesome so like don't lie to him because if you lie to yourself and lie to him you're going to live in a particular kind of hell yeah but women are not taught this and it shouldn't be coming from a fat dude in his mid-40s it we should be get, coming from the women. If we get back to Titus 2, the women would handle it. That's it. The women would step up and be women. But the women are not. The women are, the women have stopped teaching this. Yeah. Instead, we want the young preacher's wife that's like 20, 30 years old. <laughs> we always want the preacher's wife to do it, and she's 20, 30, 40 years old. And you got women in the church there has been Christians longer than she's been alive. I know. I know. But for the time they ought to be teachers, they need someone teach them again. That would be the first principles of the oracles of God. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. Yep. All right. Boys wearing masks looking at my daughter is a big fat. I don't think so. That tells me they can't stand up for themselves, let alone stand up for my daughter. I would say that when it comes to politics, that all sides, Democrat and Republic and Independents, all of them support that. that. Lucille, I appreciate it, but that's wrong. If you vote Democrat, you are voting to harm children. If you vote Republican, you are voting to protect children. That is a very easy party line to discern. And things are not the same. The the things that the Republicans have wrong are different than the things Democrat have wrong, has wrong. That's a cop-out. I would say that when it comes to politics at all sides, Democrat, Republicans, and independents, all of them support things that are against God's word. As a Christian, that would be my thing. Let's have these discussions, but list sins on all sides. So my response would be, tell me on the Republican platform in the United States what they stand for that is morally equal to the things the Democratic Party stands for and promises you they're going to put in effect. I don't you know. can't do it. The, the The Republican Party opposes transing the children. They oppose on-demand tax-funded abortion. That's a, if, if that's all, that's enough for me. Obviously, that doesn't mean that all the people that claim to be Republican are godly people. We're not no. even saying that. You're talking about what they stand for as a party. 
Yeah. It's their party platform. They're, yeah. He, here's, if you vote for us, here's what we're going to try to do. Here's the deal about the party platform. Our good brother, D. Berry. John D. Berry. He got booted out the Democrat Party in Memphis, Tennessee, because he not only would not go along with LGBT and abortion, but he vocally opposed it as a member of the quote-unquote Democrat Party in that area. They booted him out of the group. Sorry about that. They they did. They booted him out of the yeah. group. They said you have to be independent. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 said if you believe in mitigating free and uh and open on demand abortion at all, you can't be a Democrat. John D. Berry is who I'm thinking of. Yes, John D. Look, D. Berry. Look him up online. Brother Tennessee, John D. Berry. Tennessee State Representative. All right. In choosing a spouse, what are your thoughts about only selecting Christians? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I no. My my daughter and I've gotten in trouble with this. My daughter will not date someone who's not a Christian. I don't blame. And then somebody I don't so, somebody said, "Well, how, how do you uh, how do you how how do you plan on doing that? Wouldn't you push her into the arms of that boy?" Yeah, I don't have to ever tell her that I'm intervening in her dating life. I can get rid of the boy. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah. But yes, uh, we, we need to teach our children to only look for. Um, yeah, you see a lot of this in the Old Testament times. He was constantly telling them not to marry, intermarry these other yes. uh, tribes because of their ungodliness, not their skin color, yes. not they, what, how much money they made because yes. of their ungodliness. Christians do not need to marry non-Christians. That's it's it. It's very foolish. It, it's, not, it's not inherently sinful. Right. You just don't need to do it. Yeah. Um, we have a contract, me and my daughter. I, I decide who she dates. Even if I don't like him, she can date him because I can tell what will, what will make a good husband. She chooses who she marries from that pool. Mm -hmm. it, as long as she gives me veto power on her dating, that's all I want. Oh, man. Yeah. M mothers today, many, not all, are putting their teenage daughters on the pill so they don't have to worry about them getting pregnant if they do have sex instead of teaching them to abstain. I cannot. I, those of you that know us will know exactly who we're talking about and what we're talking about. At a, at a But, I, Aaron, I don't want to get any more specific than that. But at a particular church camp that I've been a part of, uh, I know that many of the high school age girls were on birth control. And the reason I know that is because you have to log your medication. Hmm. And they were on birth control for several different reasons professed. But anyway. Well, if you're not super careful, that can really open the door to a lot of problems. Yes. <laughs> Paige Perry said, I don't know, fat dude in his mid-40s may have a future in a dating device show. <laughs> I didn't know that about John D. Berry. Works with the governor of Tennessee now. Oh, I didn't Jonathan. know that either. Jonathan said that. Yeah, pretty cool. Good, good for him. That, yeah. that, gov that governor is getting to see a godly person. And that's it. He's and learning Deborah the gospel. That's it. And everyone else says, Tony, we need more dads like you. I just... Throw that out there. <laughs> anyway, and listen, man, I'm my daughter is gorgeous, and it scares me to death. I know. I mean, you have to. We, we, we fathers, we have to protect our families and protect our daughters, our children. Um, yeah. You know, there's a there's a degree to which we protect our sons too. If you have sons, <laughs> you protect them to teach. You know, it's just a little different yes. angle. You know. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Oh man. No. Yeah. You know. With my son, it's totally different. Now, yeah. that, that don't mean I want him going to date a Jezebel. Absolutely not. Right. But I also don't want him date. He he is not. We, he and I've talked about it. He doesn't want to even mess with a woman that's not a Christian because he knows the he knows the problems that are inherent with messing with a woman who is a Christian raised in this society. Yep. Yep. Cool yep. beans. All right. Uh. Just, just as an aside, maybe we go to fifteen after. Let, let's look, let's watch the rest of this video. Go ahead. We didn't start till like ten after, at least. I know. 
And it was not our fault. It was somebody else's. That's what we'll say. Right. We'll say that. <laughs> it's kind it of mine. What happened to Steve? Where is the mysterious character known as Steve? What Steve am I talking about? God made Adam and Eve. He did not make Adam and Steve. Some All right. So you've heard that, you know, God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. Therefore, homosexuality is a sin and homosexuals can't be married. Yep. I believe that. I don't know that I believe the therefore. I think I kind of am on board just a teeny bit that it's not a good argument, that it's more of a, a gotcha line. Yeah. And it is funny. I remember the first time I heard that, I was yeah. probably 10, 11 years old, and I belly, it just, it just hit me the wrong way, and I belly laughed. I laughed to my belly crammed. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. It certainly, it <laughs> cer certainly shows that, that, that homosexual marriages is not God's order of things. Right. It now, shows here, that. Just because I don't think it's the best argument doesn't mean I agree with what's about to come out of this dummy's mouth. I shouldn't say that because maybe he'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this guy's a dummy. I, I Forgive me for letting my mouth run away with me. Maybe what he says is dumb. What but... he says is dumb. Yeah. Because it's uninformed and it denies context. All right, let's go. Yeah. I, I do apologize. I, I feel. I hear I feel you. Like, yeah, I, I hear said you. Dummy, because I, I would not want him to. I, I don't know. know this man from Adam's uncle, and I wouldn't want him to listen to this and hear me. Right. That's ad hominem. Right. I hear All you. Right. I did not know that, Aaron. You and me both know who is who that individual is in that video from Alabama. Which Bitch, video? Are you, are you talking about this guy? I'm not sure for sure. Put it, Mitch, put it in the comments. Are you talking about this guy? Do y'all know this guy? Anyway, let me go. Some of you are really struggling with this issue because you're hearing what the Bible actually teaches and it's there's a conflict going on within you because you're okay. saying, is it possible we've been taught wrong about this all along? Could, could we possibly have misinterpreted these verses? And I'm telling you, it is not only possible, but you have. So those of you who are struggling and want to know. So we've misinterpreted these verses about the Genesis account. Yeah, he comments on who he is, and yeah, I, I remember this guy now. Yeah, me okay. and Mitch do know of this guy. Got you. Well, we, we may talk about that I, after the show. I want to get into this video. I don't know him personally well, Got but you. I know who he is. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. No, is this really what the Bible teaches? Just stay on the course that you're on. God has some things to show you from his word, because what we've been listening to are people with agendas, people who hate other people, and also people who don't know how to interpret the Bible. It starts... In Genesis chapter 2, someone says, God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. That rules out same-sex relationships. No, it doesn't. God made Adam and Eve, and that was his plan for Adam and Eve. That is not his plan for everybody. So, what, 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 yeah, what about Matthew 19? You have heard from the beginning that God made them male and female. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother. For this reason, because he made them male and female, they're to marry one another, male and female. Okay, wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting that wrong. That's still in the Bible. No, it's still there. It still says right, so. The same it, so thing. it so it, it it at least comes forward to the Mosaic age, and then when you go to Matthew twenty eight eighteen through twenty, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, that goes forward into the church age, does it not? Yeah, everything that Jesus taught, unless it was limited to the Mosaic time, you know, has to do with the kingdom of Christ age. That's it. You know, I All mean, right. yeah. You ready? I want to make sure I wasn't cutting you off. I'm a little keyed up. No, no I know it's Mark. You know, I was just, just, I was going over there to the passage in Mark where he talks about this, but I couldn't mm. put my finger I right on it. I was thinking Matthew, Matthew 19. Yeah, Matthew 19, Mark 10. From yeah. the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. For what that's reason? Because he made a male and female. That's it. That, that's is God's that, is pattern. That, I have to look. Is that Gar? Probably Mark, Mark ten. It's a, it's a preposition of explanation. Yeah, let me let me. I got it right here. If you don't mind. Well, hurry up. Uh, it's day D E. It's, oh so. day. Yeah. Oh, we can talk about the nuance of that. Yeah. But that yeah. anyway. Let, okay. So let's let's keep going. Go ahead. Uh, Mitch. Uh, Mitch says Tony, when you have time, this individual has a lot of videos on his TikTok page. You would be surprised at the things he says in each video. Yeah, I've, I've watched a bunch of them. 
and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty rough. And the bad thing is, he's so good at presenting it. Mm. So good at presenting it. We may, uh, I've got a video in the wings that we may do next week, Aaron, um, from this guy. Sounds good. You know. Anyway, all right, let's go. Preacher, how could you say that? Well, have you ever read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 where Paul said, it is good if a man does not have any kind of relations with a woman? In Context. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's the verse? I, I kept it open all this time. Verse 26. 26. I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress. Yep. That means it's not good other, other times. Mm -hmm. Paul's desire was during the present distress for people to be like him, single. Mm -hmm. But during the, when, the present, when, the, when the distress is not present... All right. When the when the distress is not my dog is my dog's worried about me. Sorry, man. Hey, it's okay, buddy. Because you're getting excited. <laughs> I'm getting excited. When when the distress is not present, it is not good for a man to be. Why? He says it. He because he, he's yeah. He 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 he. You'll burn with passion. He says yeah. Well, not just that. Well, I've watched the video, so you, you don't have the information I do. Right. He he says even more damning uh, uh, argument than that. All right. But yes, you will burn with passion. All right. Let's keep going, Aaron. Yep. And he says, I wish all of you would be like I am. And he's talking about being single. He says in 1 Corinthians 7, there are good reasons to be single. That's right. He does. What context? Because of the present distress. And in mm -hmm. some ways, singleness is to be preferred to being married. Because of the present distress. Right. If you have the gift of being single. In other words, because of the present distress. But right. if you cannot contain yourself, or if you cannot suppress your desires, then you need to be married. You need to even, even if the distress is present. Be with somebody. But if you can, he says it's better to be single. Well, that's because of the present distress. It's not what God said in Genesis 2. Genesis 2 said it is not good that the man should be alone. After because God wasn't dealing with the present distress. Right. Now exactly. notice, he went back to Genesis. It is not good for man to be alone. Two different contexts. But because of the present distress during this time, it is. Because if, 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 if Paul says, and he goes on, yep. if he, Paul says, generally speaking, for all people everywhere, it is better for a man to be alone, he is denying what God said in the long ago. It has to be the context of the, of the present distress. All right, let's keep going. Mm-hmm. He created Adam. Genesis 2 is not, does not cover every contingency or cover every issue or cover every person or cover every relationship. Except it is the standard for all time. Yep. Matthew chapter 19. Yeah, unless it's a present distress. Get a dog if you don't want to be alone. And for God's sake, don't sexually molest it. All right. Yeah. What's this got to do with homosexuality? I wonder. Can't wait to hear him twist that. Go ahead. He doesn't talk about it. Oh, okay. He started out alone. talking about homosexuality, and then he jumps into marriage, man and woman. Yes. Okay. Unless you want to say that Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is contradicting him, and then you just don't understand the Bible if you would say that. So, Say, did you hear what he said? You, you, you don't want to say that Paul was contradicting God. Therefore, his conclusion is God didn't make a standard for all time, but he, he leaves off Jesus' teaching, which is only authoritative because Genesis 2 is for all time. Mm -hmm. So then the only conclusion to draw is Paul is speaking about the present distress. So Genesis chapter 2 is dealing with Adam and Eve, procreation. There is always, it's always good for a man to find a woman and serve God together and be within the bonds of marriage, of biblical marriage, and procreate. That's good. It's also just as good for someone not to be married at all. To be In the present distress. Be single. Those of you who are single, the way the church looks at you, the way the church talks about you, I know, I, I know what what they say about you. When it comes to appointing church leaders, they're looking for married people. Okay, so uh, I, uh, with, with that, I, I stopped it too late. I wanted to talk about this phrase. I know, I know what the church look, how the church looks at single people. I'm with him on this. I know how the church looks at single people, and I know how the church looks at looks at sing, uh, married people who don't have children. It's egregious. All right. We shouldn't treat them that way. Yeah. They're valuable to the kingdom. Absolutely. Just for whatever reason, they were either never married or they never had children. Mm -hmm. 
He keeps saying you don't understand the Bible, but he does, making you feel ignorant. That's it. And he's so smooth. Good grief, this man is smooth. I wish I looked and talked like him, but I have <laughs> my knowledge. All right. You'd have more hair, that's for sure. <laughs> I would. I'd grow what I'd style it. Like him. Yeah, boy. <laughs> but that, 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 anyway. <laughs> All right, let's, let's keep going now. Then he, he equates, though, how the church wrongly treats single people and, and married people with no children. Jumps into another category. Jumps into another category. <laughs> people, they ignore the single people. They're some of the best people in the world are the single Christians, but they look down on you. Something wrong with you because you're not married. Well, not according to Paul. It's just as good to be single as it is to be married. But he says if you cannot control yourself, then you need to be married. Genesis chapter 2 has nothing to do with sexual orientation. It doesn't cover every kind of relationship question, not by any stretch of the imagination. So the fact that God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, it means absolutely nothing except. I, I'm with him on that. The, the, the Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve thing is like, that's funny. And it's fun to use with people who agree with you, but it does absolutely nothing to turn the heart of a person who thinks that homose a homosexual lifestyle is acceptable in the sight of God. Yeah. In that case. Oh, sorry, Aaron. I was, no, I just, yeah. And we can talk about that more another time too. But yeah, I think I agree with you because that can, that's, that, that argument can be mitigated. You know, it can be, be shown to be that that's not a foregone solid argument, I guess. You, you'd say. you, 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 you win the comment section right there. He probably can't cook like you. You got it there. <laughs> that's it. Yep. yep. That's it. You got it. I, I will hold to that. I'm cooking some stuff today for a Nigerian family. Uh, oh, their baby's in the hospital, and they've been out of sorts. And you know how we love people. We love them through their mouth. Like, hey, you going, right. through a, you going through a hard time? Eat let some stuff, of this pork tenderloin. Let me stuff your mouth and your stomach. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That'll Eat prove somebody, I love you. <laughs> Eat some of these mashed taters. <laughs> All right, That'll prove I love you. <laughs> That's it. Let, let's finish this. We're over time. Yeah, we are. He made... Adam and Eve for a purpose. Later on, that did not apply to everybody. So it'd be the same way. See, look right there. Later on, that did not apply to everybody. Can a rabbi, can a man divorce his wife for any cause? Have you not heard that from the beginning? Like, come on. Yep. How can you say that? With, uh, with, with someone with same-sex attraction. If they cannot control themselves, what are they supposed to do? If they cannot control their urges, what are they supposed to do? Same thing that heterosexuals are supposed to do. Oops, I didn't hear this part. There it is. Wow, Aaron. Go back. My mind is blown. Go back. I need to hear it one more time. I just caught yes, it very quickly. because I didn't hear that part. I'm going to let it play. Y'all listen. Listen to how slick and logically arranged his path is. Mm -hmm. from where he started and being a eunuch for the kingdom to same-sex marriage. Wow. Not by any stretch of the imagination. So the fact that God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, it means absolutely nothing, except that in that case, he made Adam and Eve for a purpose. Later on, that did not apply to everybody. So it'd be the same way with, uh, with, with someone with same-sex attraction. If they cannot... Control themselves, what are they supposed to do? If they cannot control their urges, what are they supposed to do? Same thing that heterosexuals are supposed to do. Find a relationship based on <laughs> love and not lust, and then you have a way to, a biblical way to express that. Not wow. Marriage so he's given is, up the whole definition of marriage. Marriage is one man, one woman. Yeah. Matthew he's, chapter 19. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't even have to have a verse in the Bible that calls homosexuality a sin. You just have to have God's definition. He made in the beginning, he made them male and female and joined together male and female. Mm -hmm. That's the definition. He didn't join together two men. So I he guess I have to two women. I guess I have to give some more validity that I took away to the argument of God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Just because he's you know, because he's saying he's saying that 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 for this reason because he made them male and for, female. For this reason. Yeah. That's it. Because he made them that way, not Adam and Steve. Yeah. He made, which he's not saying that, but explicitly 
It's implied, I guess you'd say. But because yeah. he made them Adam and Eve, a male and female, he married them together and he set the precedent for marriage. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, and then, yeah, and he answered and said, have you not read that he that made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Mm-hmm. Marriage is always between a man and a woman. Yeah. Well, God destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the plains because of their homosexuality. I, I assume. No, that's because they that's because they were raping. That's not because of homosexuality. He, yeah, I assume he would say it's because they were raping or it's non consensual yeah. or something. Yeah, Galatians five nineteen through twenty. Man, man, there's good good stuff in the comment sections. We're already so far over. I can't de- I, I can't I mean, deal with them all. De- saying I can't deal with them makes it so sound sound so antagonistic. I cannot address them all is what I mean by that. Um, People are still watching, though. That's the encouraging I know. thing. Yeah, very encouraging. So um, Jude 7, if I might. As yes, Sodom sir. and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to fornication and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Not because they were raping each other, because they were committing fornication and going after strange right. flesh. right. For, rape is a different rape rape is fornication but, but it's, it's not a, it's not strange flesh right That's... nor nor and if you say so if a woman goes into a police station she says hey um i i i fornicated okay what's new you know everybody fornicates even if they knew what that word meant but you have to go in there and say hey i was forcibly raped right i was raped yeah, that, yes, then you get a different response. Right. All right. Self-control is one of the fruits of this, or is a part. Sorry, let me just read the comment as it says. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. God is a creator of the universe. He gets to make the rules. Huh. It's a novel concept, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Uh, Jonathan, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. So there's so many verses. But even if we didn't have any verses... They talked about the sin of homosexuality. Marriage is honorable in all in the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. If that's all we had. And then marriage is between a man and a woman. If that's all we had, we would know. If that all we had was enough. Genesis 2 and Hebrews 13, 4, you'd know what marriage is according to God, and you'd know that the marriage bed is undefiled. Everything that's else it. would be defiled. Everything that's else would be it. a whoremonger or a, what does it say, fornicator? Something fornicators like and adulterers yeah. god yeah. will judge let yeah. me let me there's two or three seconds left let me see if he says anything crazier and he's already yeah, go said, ahead. has he not even read uh or has he even read romans one <laughs> i don't see how that could even be controversial i know it is because of what's been taught but if you put all that the bible says on this subject together it's clear to see but you didn't put i'm oh, sorry <laughs> you didn't put all that the bible says together you cherry picked no. That's exactly what he did. It's like the denominational Romans road. Yep. Yeah, I can I can get from the cross to heaven and never touch baptism if I cherry pick my verses. But That's even right. if you even if you deny the reason we're baptized, you cannot have a person in Christ without baptism. I, I'm okay. I gotta be done. Yeah. See the kind of relationships, the kind of activities that he is condemning versus the loving relationships that he is never against. So, so, so the standard is humanistic love. Right. Not God's definition of love. That's it. All right, dude. Man, we will be judged by Jesus' words, John 12, 48. Um, Scott Beck, nah, my blood pressure is fine. I didn't get my heart rate up. My watch would tell me. <laughs> and but it you know, get me excited. I'm like, good grief, man! I know. And here's that, another thing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that that last thirty seconds blew my mind. I know because I didn't watch it when I was putting this together. I watched. I, I didn't realize I didn't watch the last thirty seconds of that video. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, when you asked me, well, what about how, how does it have to do with homosexuality? I was like he never touches it again. Oh, was I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a, a comment a little while back I wanted to mention we missed is was Lucille Wright. 
And uh, she said, thanks for responding to my comment and responding respectfully. That's how discussions should be. Ah, we can you. disagree and be respectful to each other. And uh, we're talking about the way the platform is for the Democrat Party and so forth. And, yes. Yeah, and that, that's a thing. Appreciate and, that comment. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, I'm not extolling the virtues. I mean, the, Donald Trump is not a virtuous person. No, absolutely not. But let me tell you something. If I ever go hog hunting, I'm going to use four gators on a stick is what they call them. It's four pit bulls that are so game and wild and rank that you can't touch them, that you have to have a catch pole and a stick, and you hold them at the end of the stick. And whenever the Catahoula leopard dogs bay the hog, you send the pit bulls in there, and the pit bulls, the gators on the stick, bite the pit, bite the hog and hold it down to the ground. And then you come up and you stab the hog. That's how traditional hog hunting is done. And then you go get your catch pole and get the get your get your mean crazy gators on sticks your pit bulls now i'm not going to let my child play with my catch dogs my pit bulls that i used to catch hogs with but for the their intended job they're perfect that's what donald trump was he was not a virtuous person he was crass. He was a hammer looking for a nail. Sometimes when he swung a hammer, when he was swung, sometimes when he swung a hammer, he hit a nail and sometimes he hit a baby. Like it, it didn't work out all the time. Mm -hmm. But Christianity was better off under Donald Trump in the United States of America. Oh, but Tony, why would you say that? Because it's true. It's not only is it true, Aaron, it is objectively true. And I'm tired of people denying it. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer Joe Biden and the Democrats are in power, the more it's seen that the more difficult it is for Christianity. In fact, when we go to, uh, well, we don't have enough time. <laughs> yeah. Go to First Timothy and look at for what we pray, for whom we pray, and why we pray. Yeah. Christianity thrives during times of civil rest. There was civil rest with Donald Trump. If Republicans, if Ron DeSantis gets, gets into power with the Republicans, there will be civil rest because we will have law and order because they won't let you have a year and a half of Black Lives Matter riots. They won't let, they won't let you have uh, COVID lockdowns. They won't let you just, just go look at the way Florida was run. Uh, during 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. And ask yourself, would the nation be better off if it was run like Florida, or would the, nature, would the nation be better off if it were run like Detroit, Michigan? Or California. <clears throat> or, or California, Los Angeles, San Francisco. There is an app that you can download for San Francisco that tells you the level of human fecal matter that is on any given street. Ooh. So you can avoid it. Yikes. That's democratic leadership. How come people, how come so many people are moving to Florida? They're not moving to California. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, that's like saying, how come so many people, if America is such a terrible, systemically racist nation, how come people of color are fleeing their nation Why are they come coming to, here? The, to come to the systemically racist nation? Something to think about. That's it. And I'm, I'm tired of mitigating this. Yep. If it's true, I can say it. We can discuss it. it. Oh, yeah. While we're on it, if Islam is so peaceful when it has its way, why aren't <laughs> there mass migrations to the Middle East? To, yes, why are there not mass migrations to Saudi Arabia? Why? Because... Because Don't tell me it's just temperature. They got some beaches over there. I've seen videos. They're beautiful. I guarantee you. But anyway. it's, it, it, it's because women have no rights, mm -hmm. homosexuals, homosexuals, homosexual people who practice homosexuality are thrown from the roofs. If you get gang raped as a woman, you could be killed because you allowed yourself to get gang raped. Yep. Something to think about it. Here in Bad Arkansas, side. if you were coming from California, leave your liberalism in California. That's what Texas and Florida says. Anyway, I don't want to make the podcast about that. I want to end on this note. We need to protect the sanctity of our home. 
And all of this came from Jonathan's comment in the beginning. There are three institutions, yep. the government, the home, and the church. All three of them are sacrosanct. And if you can take a Venn diagram, Google that, Venn diagram, the government, mm -hmm. the home, and the church, and where those three things overlap, that's where Christians function. That's where Christian func Christians function. Aaron, I'm done. You got anything you want to say? That sounds great. Yeah, I wish we could find a Venn diagram like that. I'm going to look it up. That'd oh, be, we could make, cool. one. make one. Yeah, we need to make one. We need to put that in the locals. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Man, we that's it. One. It was a lot of good stuff considered today, and we just we just got to be people that, you know, we know true humility, and we know we know our proper role in regard to God's Word, and we need to – we just – we have got our society, Satan is dominating our society, and a lot of it is through emotionalism. Oh, that's you know? it. But we've got to get facts over feelings, you know. Our feelings have to be guided, governed, and controlled by the Word of God. And we've got to quit letting the media and, and you know, don't, don't let the way you feel about anyone be because of what you saw on TV or the Internet, for heaven's sakes. That's it. Don't feel the way you do about black people or white people or whoever. Or even Muslim any, people. Muslim, or even. Yeah, any of them be because of something you saw on the internet. Something you saw. Get out in your community and teach people the gospel and love them enough to teach them the truth about Jesus being the one way. You know, That's learn to, 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 to live and serve and work together. If, what's, what does Paul say in Romans 12? As, as much as possible, live at peace among all people. That, that means there's sometimes you're not. That's right. But you're you're going to try your best. Is as much as possible without compromising Jesus and the truth. That's the ticket. Be at peace. Yep. Well, we better we better be quiet. Thanks, everybody, for That's listening. It. I've enjoyed all the comments. Really appreciate y'all yes. commenting and coming in. Yes, thank you so much. God bless y'all. This has been Tony Brewer and Aaron Dotson with Christianity Now. Um, we'll catch y'all on the flip side.